think you have a glory way to be.
to be collected a bit when they lay their eggs. Because if we get lots and lots of rain, then their egg or their chick can be flooded out of the burrow. However, we are in Scotland and it does rain quite a lot, so it does get to the point they just have to lay their egg. Unfortunately, the persons here on Craig Leap have faced a bit of a problem because there is an invasive plant species on the island called tree mallow. Now, tree mallow was initially brought onto the Bass Rock, the island we're going to go next, uh, about 300 years ago because its leaves are believed to have medicinal purposes. However, the plant has spread to the surrounding island and the roots of the tree mallow block the access to the puffins' burrows. So if the puffins can't get into the burrow, they don't lay any eggs, and then they very quickly start to decline in their numbers. However, actually for the last 12 years we've had a group of very dedicated volunteers um, who have taken part in the project SOS Puffins, and they have come out by hand and chopped down uh, by hand as much of the tree mammal as they can reach to allow the puffins to integrate. Um, so over the last 12 years we've had over a thousand volunteers give up their time to come out to the island. So without their hard work, um, we really wouldn't have very many puffins. So I personally would like to give a big thank you to all those volunteers.
5,000 pairs here to breed this year. their heads back and forward and touch your beaks against one another. And some people think it looks aggressive, it's actually not. It's their way of showing affection to their partner. It's a bit like a peck on the cheek falling on it. The other behaviour that you can see is sky pointing. So keep your eyes peeled for any sky pointing today. That's when their necks are stretched out and their heads are pointed up to the sky. And they do that to let their partner know that they want to switch things on the neck. When you see them close up like this, you can tell that the gannets are a lot larger in size than the other birds we've seen today. They are the UK's largest seabirds. Fan all up to six feet. Now, if you take a closer look at the nest that the gannets are sitting on, the majority of the nests are made up of seaweed things that the gannets have found floating in the water. Unfortunately, if you take a look slightly further up, you will notice uh, lots of rope and plastic and rubbish in on the gannets' nest. Now they are using what they find in the water, and unfortunately things like that are ending up in the sea. Now this can cause huge problems for the gannets, because if they end up swallowing the plastic, they are unable to digest it, so it stays in their stomach and they don't go out hunting because their stomachs are full of plastic and they can starve to death. So it is a very important reminder that we as a human society need to do more to try and reduce the plastic in the ocean and reduce the plastic we are consuming so that gannets don't pay the price for our mistakes. look right up to the top just now, you will notice that the majority of the gannets are in fact nesting up there. It's a little bit more packed in up there. Now the reason the gannets are up towards the top is because it is flatter further away from the water which makes it slightly steep. So those are the most ideal nesting sites for the birds. arrive here in March, April time, they are very territorial, so they have to fight for the spot they want. And most fights do tend to start off up the top there because that's where the gants want to nest. And unfortunately they can tumble down into water or into the rocks below. And gannets are known to fight to the death over the so certainly do not want to mess with the gannet trying to find the nest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now the gannets that do manage to wrap those feet up the top are generally a little bit more mature. They're older and they've done this a few times. But those younger, poor new parents who haven't done this before end up left with the nesting sites that nobody else wants to take. And those are those sites around the edge that are a little bit more dangerous. Do 
you have to be quite careful because you wouldn't go through and they could cause that very precious chick or egg down into the monster and bruise it. Now because of the size of the gannet, it's a very large bird, they did only lay the single egg per with a black wing tip, whereas immature gannets still have quite a few black feathers, and so they're a little bit polka dot colour for some people. Thank you. 
right here. Um, there are a few spots lower down on the rock that could be big enough for the gas line. But in case of avoid anything too low, because on a rough day, the winds can come crashing up uh, with the waves and wash them into the waves. So you have to keep quite a reasonable distance up the rock in order to protect them. Occasionally we do see puffins on the bass rock. 
However, if they are to burrow on the island, they tend to burrow down underneath these old walls. Thank you. 